when it comes to you know, your likelihood of going to jail if you commit a crime is less about your skin color and more about your wealth and how, how competent of a counsel you can hire, right? And so, for example, LeBron James, if Bronny you know, gets caught dealing crack, which I don't think he will, he's going to have the best lawyer on the planet representing him that will be filing motions for dismissal, cross-examination of evidence, you know, all sorts of different things. So it's less about race, isn't it? I mean, if Denzel Washington kids or Oprah's God's ki God kids did that, it's more about really a wealth problem, right? So then you'd say, well, it's because of racism. Well, no, it's not. Blaming wealth inequality between races, which I don't like doing, but if you want to play that game strictly on racism, is a sloppy way to look at things. What's up, YouTube? Hope you guys are feeling good. Today, guys, we're back giving some new video. Today, we're going to be checking out Charlie Cook. Um, you guys say you don't understand what I'm saying. So I'm trying my best to slow down my words to speak so everyone can understand me. Um, I call him Charlie Kick because he loves kicking people's ass. So Charlie the left ass. So today, we're going to check out Charlie Cook course, courses in labor meltdown. I love checks out for you guys. Let's get right into it. Uh, hey, Charlie, thanks for coming. Uh, I want to ask some que a question about uh, racism. I okay. know you've argued that systemic racism in the US doesn't exist. I right. wanted to point out some answers I think that's obviously wrong okay. and see how, what you think about it. So just starting with the issue of crime, we know for a fact, because it's, it's been studied pretty extensively, black people and people who aren't black or white people use drugs, commit nonviolent drug offenses at pretty much the same rates. Um, black people get arrested for these crimes about I think two to three times more often. It's dropping now that we've like legalized weed more in more and more states, which is a great, a great thing that we've done. Even if you say that like police are doing that like not on purpose, but because they're just in areas where more violent crime is committed and they're That's patrolling, yeah. isn't that an obvious example of like something that black people have to deal with in this country that's much worse off for them than non-black people? Okay. Uh, no, but uh, any other point you want to make about systemic racism? So let me ask you a question. You believe there's systemic racism? Um, just like some, I would say that there's a lot of shit that black people have to deal with that makes them worse off in the country. Okay, uh, such as like having to be around police all the time? Yeah, because if okay. you're around police, not because police, are, but because of, we have like this, I think, like shitty law that you have to, that you're going to get arrested for committing a nonviolent drug crime. So as an extension of that, you're around police more often. You're more likely to be arrested for that crime. So look, here's the thing. So in 2018, blacks made up 53% of all the homicide offenders in America. No one wants to wow. say it out loud, but blacks commit more crimes than whites and Asians and Hispanics. In fact, there's a disproportionate amount of crime committed by blacks in America. And so therefore, you're going to have a heavier police presence. And so why is that happening? I believe there's a fatherless ep epidemic happening in America. And I really don't have a soft spot for the argument like, hey, there's too many police around, therefore I can't like deal crack without being interrupted. Like not exactly very compelling to me, okay? That? Now secondly, let me say this though, is that there are issues, if you wanna just talk strictly racial, that are disproportionately affecting white America such as opioids and fentanyl. And not to say that blacks are not affected by this, but it is a disproportionate rural issue. Now, why would that be? Well, white individuals, because of the industrial kind of growth in America, were more likely to get involved in muscular trades in Ohio and Pennsylvania, especially in steel mill towns and such. Therefore, they'd be more what? Likely to get injured at work. So mm. you get likely to get injured at work because of the Sackler family, which you and I could probably agree are a bunch of criminals who should be put in prison for a long period of time. They started to overprescribe oxycotton, oxycotton, I'm sorry, um, into the communities, and therefore getting these people addicted to the high of an opioid and then searching for other places to go there. So we could play these kind of racial games all the time. Is it fair for someone in Southeast Ohio who's white, who you know, was a son of a steel mill worker, you know, and all these things, that they might have been more exposed to this sort of thing? I think the, the hyper-racialization of all that is less important than the real, more fundamental question, which is why does race matter in any of this? And I say it doesn't. I don't like looking at people through a racial lens. If you want to do that, which I said, the statistics are not good at all. In fact, it shows that there's an under-policing problem in black neighborhoods across America. In fact, 50% of homicides go unsolved in Chicago, 50% because of it's lack massive. of detectives and lack of police in a lot of these areas. And kind of for your you know, daily thought crime, um, police prevent crime, and they did prevent crime in New York City. New York City was one of the most dangerous, murderous cities in the 1980s and early 1990s, and someone who I think it's unnecessarily mocked and smeared, Rudy Giuliani became mayor and cleaned up that entire city. And to his credit, 
liberal Democrat who ran for president, Mike Bloomberg, continued those policies. And so, look, um, any thoughts on that really quick? Because I want to get some other questions. But um, Yeah, I think I, d I wasn't disagreeing at all that police do a lot of great work. The okay. only problem with that is that it is a true fact that a valid, ex that a factual extension of the fact that police are in certain areas more often means that if society has shitty laws, those shitty laws are going to be enforced more often. I think most well, okay, people okay, but I, I don't think agree, I don't like think the law crack. against oh, I'm, okay. Sorry to interrupt, but I don't think a law against dealing crack is a bad law. Okay, but what about weed? W w what about weed? I think the same applies for weed. You're much more likely to get arrested, and even if this isn't happening as much now, it happened much more often in the past. You're much more likely to get arrested. So there's been there's been plenty of studies done by Harvard and. Maryland showing there was actually an under-policing problem in a lot of these communities. You, can, you and I could do statistics all day long because I'm sure that there's plenty that you could cite. But first of all, I'm not a fan of legalizing marijuana. I think it's a really bad idea. Um, but I, I can probably agree with you that there is a problem with locking people in prison for an extended period of time for using marijuana. But there's another fun, more fundamental question, which is this, which is you can get into sentencing, right, which is usually kind of a talking point, which is mm -hmm. that the most important thing when it comes to you know, your likelihood of going to jail if you commit a crime is less about your skin color and more about your wealth and how, how competent of a counsel you can hire, right? And so, for example, LeBron James, if Bronny, you know, gets caught dealing crack, which I don't think he will, he's going to have the best lawyer on the planet representing him that will be filing motions for dismissal, cross-examination of evidence, you know, all sorts of different things. So it's less about race, isn't it? I mean, if Denzel Washington kids or Oprah's God's ki God kids did that, it's more about really a wealth problem, right? So then you'd say, well, it's because of racism. Well, no, it's not. Blaming wealth inequality between races, which I don't like doing, but if you want to play that game, strictly on racism is a sloppy way to look at things. So the, the perspective we have is a perspective of Thomas Hole, Thomas, Thomas Sowell, which is you look at the whole body of work, you'll see that just because you have disparate outcomes does not mean, mean you could solely blame discrimination. And I'll prove it to you with one data point and then we'll move on, which is this. Which is that you can have different data points that have outcomes and there's other factors that play in. So for example, San Francisco and New York are far wealthier than Missoula, Montana and Birmingham, Alabama. Why? Someone would say, racism! Well, no, it's not. Mountain towns and inland cities are just less likely to be around commerce and trade. And port cities, by definition, are always wealthier. That has hmm. nothing to do with race and everything to do with geography. True. What does that example have to do? Sometimes True. you can have disparate outcomes with data, and attributing racism to it is actually not just imprudent, it's really, really detrimental and harmful. So one thing that I would agree with that we need to do, put fathers back into the home, uh, which is very, very important. In 1965, Marriage rates in the black community were about 80%. Now it's plummeted down to 20 to 25%. There's a lot of reasons for this, subsidizing single motherhood through the Great Society and many other things. But there's other factors that play in. How many words is a child hearing at home? Is the child getting read to on a daily or weekly basis by parents? Those things transcend race. And in fact, the hyperfixation on kind of systemic racism, I think kind of creates a smoke screen that disallows sure. us from actually finding meaningful solution to these problems. So thank you, we gotta get to the next question. Appreciate it, thank you. Okay, this was actually interesting to watch. I love the entire video. I love how Charlie handled it, how Charlie's taking it. Um, for the aspect of the drug aspect, I, I feel like black people have been kept in prison for a long time because of the marijuana, um, the weed, if I would say, which should not be so, which is bad. But I feel like I support the aspect of not legalizing crack and um, also weed. I feel like it is at the same time where people smoke it is also dangerous to their health. And uh aside that it also has great impact in the society we live in. And I love the students' points of the view because if they feel like the students are seeing racism being displayed, uh black people are being treated badly because of just by their skin color, they just want to have them because they feel like they're doing something bad or they have drugs in their home uh, or they have drugs in their house and if you if you look at the boys' points of view, it's it's it actually makes sense, make a lot of sense because he's someone who has I feel like he has experienced it himself. Uh, for him speaking out, he's just trying to voice his own opinion about what he have actually weakness and so before, but uh, systemic racism exists. But at the same time, I don't fully really believe in systemic racism because if you are a black person and you are successful, there. Is, even if you are being arrested for using weed or crack, 
you, you're going to get out from it. The reason why, because of your money or your influence you have, you might actually use it to, to, to get out from this um, situation. But people who don't have such influence, that's where the boy is looking at. If you don't have such influence on power or money, you, you're going to be locked up. But if we have to look at it at the other lens, everyone, everyone who has been found with crack or weed, the same law applied to them. But the more target, the target, I feel like police are actually targets not more, is actually the black. If you, if you, if you think about it, like just logically, you feel like it's the black that always targeting. But we all know that the black commits a lot of crime. In 2018, you see that the, the crime rates of black people were really high. So they are always the targets because they feel like they, they do a lot of bad things. They, they boggle stores. So they are always the targets. Whenever a crime commits, if they are to chase a white man or a black man, they will chase a black man first because they feel like he's the, he's the, he's the person who committed the crime. Because And that is where the systemic racism actually appears. We all know that. But anyone who commits a crime is going to be punished. Irrespective of skin color, um, where, where you are from, you're going to be punished. You, the same law is going to apply to you. But the person that's going to look at that is possible of committing such crime is a black person. We all know that. That is fat. But I love the entire video. I love the boy's point of view. I love Charlie taking it. Uh, Charlie saying we should not see um, it as racism. That he does not believe in racism. Um, he he don't see it in that kind of lens. That they use systemic racism as a smoke in our eye, not to see the clear picture that black families are being um, missing father figures in the in the in the family. That itself is true. Um, in the black community, fathers are actually missing. <laughs> I would say missing, but a lot of them are in jail, and a lot of them are dead, which itself creates. Um, I I won't say bad. Uh, but kind of poor parenting in the aspect of single mother training a child. Because the child itself will want to stand up as a man, especially if he's a, if he's a male in the family, he wants to stand up as a man to look up to the look um, after the mother and also the sister if they have if there's a gay in the family and also provide. So by doing that, um he tends to join some gangs, you understand, in order to provide for the family, which itself results to higher rates of crime. So um Charlie's point of view in right here is actually true. But this the students, college students' point of view, are actually see it in a clearer picture that the boy is, is speaking sense, like he's saying facts, and it's what is really happening in society that we are trying to see right here. This was beautiful to watch. I enjoyed every moment of it. Comment down below, think about this video, give us a thumbs up, share this video to as many as can subscribe to our channel. I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure you stay safe. I just want a bag, like an old lady. I'm back, wood smoking, I don't own papers, pass that 808. That don't, don't shake her. Oh, bitch, you know I'm grinding like a pro skater. Baby, mama bugging, I'm so quick to hit ignore. Buku bitch, in my bed. I got scales.